very much for being with us this evening. Obviously, this music means a great deal to a lot of us. Some of us, as myself, were lucky early on to be dropped into New York City and dipped into this music. This weekend, we are honoring one of these great percussionists who made it possible for this music to continue. So, without further ado, would you welcome, along with his friends, Francisco Acore. Francisco is part of the first echelon of drummers who came to this country and are responsible for all the drummers after them. Beginning with Chano Pozo, who came and played with Dizzy Gillespie's group in 1946, right after Chano came this whole slew of drummers. There was Patato, Candido, Armando Peraza, Mongo Santa Maria, Julito Collazo, and Francisco. They set the standard. The recordings they made with jazz artists and pop artists and salsa artists are the ones that we all listen to to learn how to play.
principal es verdad, de nuestra música. La música nuestra. Siempre, y siempre ha, ha preservado en él el problema de, de no dejar caer la, el ritmo de Cuba. Siempre igual. Él toca con todo el mundo, pero siempre manteniendo el, el ritmo nuestro. Es muy importante eso. Esa es la labor nuestra en general. Hacemos todo, pero siempre preservando el ritmo. that I was going to make this record in California. Could I use out here? He said, Francisco, that's who you should use because the guy, you don't have to explain nothing to him because the, the guy knows he, he grew up in this music. Yo aprendí a tocar allí en Matanza. Porque en Matanza hay mucho ritmo de tambores. Porque la provincia de Matanza es muy rica en el sistema de la tradición africana. Porque Cuba es uno de los países más ricos en la tradición africana de la América. Porque Cuba se hizo con toda la cultura de diferentes partes de África. to be a talking drum, the bata, because the Nigerian language is a tonal language. The drum could imitate a sound that goes modu pue to say thank you, or, or to, it could be immolated, copied on the drum itself. With muffled tones and open and a variety of different pitches that are gotten out of the drum. The big drum controls the whole thing and calls and signals the changes. By signaling certain changes, it creates conversations that are responded to by the middle drum and responded to by the little drum as well. Francisco is a master bata drummer, one of the very first masters to come and be established in the United States and to live here. 
And him, as well as uh, his friend Julito Collazo, who also moved to New York City many years ago, they are the resident masters for the longest period of time here in this country. Julito and Francisco can sing you a song that has a melody that's got to be at least four centuries old when they go, Hey, da 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 ma de da 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 ma de oh, song, bay me on, bay me on. And both of them can tell you that divides into 21 songs with the same melody. And that same song sung in Trinidad, and it's up and down the coast of Brazil. It just came over here radially. Because we're dealing with something classical. These guys are like Rosetta Stone 1, Rosetta Stone 2. They're flesh and blood Rosetta Stones. <laughs> mi patrón. Este es el día de Santa Bárbara, eh, diciembre 3, con cualquiera que yo esté trabajando, yo no trabajo para nadie ese día. Ni viernes, ni sábado, ni cualquier día que caiga, yo no trabajo para nadie. Para nadie, porque se llama, ese día es Santa Bárbara. Y yo quiero mucho a San Santa. Y de Europa, cuando they came to Cuba, one of the first things they noticed about the strange white folk was that when lightning storms broke out, they would light a candle. And obviously, who are they lighting a candle for? Sooner or later, they were told, Santa Barbara, because she's the patron saint that protects you from lightning. Saint Barbara, when her day falls, that activates Shango. <laughs> Yo empecé con el batá, tocando batá de, de ceremonia. are very important in the religious ceremonies because they provide the voice by which the practitioners communicate with the divinities. What they strive for is to call the Orisha down to take possession of one of the practitioners and then the Orisha through that person gives advice to the people who are present by either knowing beforehand or being able to tell by what the person is wearing or by which song that person came up to salute the drums on, the drummer will know which is the orisha of that person and could start playing something directed at that orisha and directed at that person. I've seen that happen before where Francisco will direct his energy that way and start playing something really focused into that person and it will work and right there the person will get possessed. <laughs> the priesthood and they go through their initiation that the first part of it has a lot to do with the head and so the head is shaved completely bald right yeah. completely and then they also paint the head different colors different colors what but color for different gods or yeah like for the yeah. color of like you you're from Watala mm. blue red and white Blue, red, and white, okay. Whose colors are those? Uh, uh, blue is a Yemayan, and red is of Shango, and, and white is of Adala.
there are different but related religions that come from the same area of Africa. For example, the Ijesa. They have different rhythms and different drums and different songs, but there's, there's a connection between the Yoruba and the Ijesa because those were neighboring tribes. It's not uncommon to have Afro-Cubans who, you know, they have four grandparents. One of them was Caravali, one was Yoruba, one was Arara, and the other one was Ijesa. Mi abuela pertenecía a la rama de, de Yesá. Le daba, tenía hecho santo Ogún y le daba el espíritu Ogún. Hay un canto que, que con ese canto siempre traían el santo de mi abuela. Siempre lo canto que sí. Ala e a e ogu o a e a e a e ogu o a e ala e a e ogu o a e ala e a e ogu o a e. Yo salí de Cuba porque conocía a la señora Catarín Dunham y ella le gustó mucho como yo tocaba en el cabaret San Susi. Le preguntó a la Irma Rodríguez, a la doctora, que si ella podía hablar conmigo, pensó que iba a ser una película. Dunham was very well known for her interest and her work in the area of investigating Caribbean music. She investigated music from Haiti and from Jamaica and Trinidad and Brazil, and she would always immerse herself in it by going to those places and getting together with folklorists who were well-known drummers and dancers from those areas. So when she came to Cuba, she hooked up with Francisco and Julito, who were among the best. We have the whole company in the picture, Mambo. Who was the girl that sang, remember? Xiomara Alfaro. Ocho Mara. Xiomara. Si. And she, she one night, she got possessed. And I don't know, Santos. Mm -hmm. and we were filming in the studio, and they had to stop everything. How many years were you with Miss Donna? Miss Donna told me. <laughs> Say, Francisco, you're coming for three months uh, for the movie, to look into the movie. And uh, the movie not finished in three months. The movie finished in about six months, take about. And I keep, uh, I want to go back to Cuba. <laughs> I want to go back to Cuba and say, uh, Francisco, stay uh, one more month <laughs> until when I find another drum. <laughs> <laughs> and I go and say one more month, and then I say, Francisco, I say, okay, it's one month now, I want to go back to Cuba. And they say, oh, Francisco, you stay another two months. Okay, I stay another two months. And the, and the two months, I say, well, I want to go back to Cuba, it's too, I can't find a good drummer like you. I say, it's another three months, and I stay. <laughs> then Australia, <laughs> even Mexico. I stayed for four years in the company.
Francisco was very well known for, in the barrios for playing in the comparsa, being the carnival group that would come out every carnival time to play. Desde que llegaba la, la Navidad, lo, lo, lo que estaba pensando en, la, en, en seguida que la comparsa, la, eso es un, para nosotros eso es mejor que era mejor que, 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 que ser rico. Yo me ponía el tambor aquí, el quinto aquí, en, en me, aquí en Mechobre, como dicen los americanos. Yo no soltaba ese quinto de las 8 de la, de la noche hasta las 4 de la mañana, o 4 y media que ya se terminaba todas las compañías. Juramos que, ok, o vamos a jurar que no vamos a soltar el tambor hasta que no se termine el desfile, ok, estamos muero con el tambor, seguimos con el tambor. Y, y sudando, y sudando, y las compases, santas compases, como 18 compases, y va tocando, y, va, y parando, y sigue tocando, y sigue tocando, y sigue tocando, hasta que llegue ahí. A veces que se encuentra compases que son más fuertes que la suya, entonces tiene que reforzar su compasa porque, porque si no, la que va adelante acaba con usted, y todo el mundo quiere ser, y todo el mundo quiere ser, yo soy yo. Tocamos igual rumba. La rumba se toca en Cuba todos los días. Nosotros no tenemos día especial para tocar la rumba. Nosotros, la rumba es... En, aquí mismo ahora nosotros somos una rumba aquí sin el tambor. Ya más quedando aquí, aquí o aquí o en la, en la pared. Entonces en Cuba, nosotros la, la rumba es 24 horas al día. Porque nos encontramos en la esquina y, y vamos a tomar un trago en la esquina y vamos a tomar una cerveza y otro dice, bueno, ¿por qué no fumamos una rumbita? Y entonces se le empieza a dar a la gente. Y otro viene a la pared y otro agarra, la, la, agarra una botella de cerveza y, una, y un pedazo de, Y la, a lo mejor la, tap, la tapita de la cerveza, la botella, y el ca, 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 y ahí se empezó la rumba.
Francisco has recorded with Peggy Lee and was a member of her group for many years. He's recorded with Tito Puente also. He's recorded many albums with Eddie Palmieri. He's lived off and on between Los Angeles, New York, and San Francisco, and he's been involved with Latin groups and jazz groups in each of those places. One of the things that will never cease to amaze me is how he could play all night at Caesars, all weekend. He'd play Friday and Saturday night, play till four in the morning, then get in his car, drive to Los Angeles, He'd be arriving there about 10, 11 in the morning to play a ceremony that begins maybe at uh, 1 or 2 in the afternoon that would last all day. Then he'd finally get a few hours sleep, but then have to get up early the next morning to start preparing the drums and get everything together for the next thing, because there's usually two in a row he would play. Without too much sleep, he would then play in the ceremony, and as the ceremony went on and got more intense, he would get stronger and stronger. He gets that life from the drum. To me, the most important thing about Francisco is the spiritual inspiration that he teaches how music and spirituality are one and the same. Playing with him and Armando have always been an inspiration to me. Every time I see Armando and Francisco, both of them playing together to this day, the walls start to sweat. You know, I'm not making it up. All of a sudden, the walls start sweating. So I know that they can also, by virtue of how they play, they change the elements around them. I mean, they're that powerful.
the 1992 National Heritage Fellows.